you always think singing was just a talent? Some people can and some people can't. It's just that simple? While a researcher at the University of Missouri, Columbia, might want to disagree with that statement. I wouldn't say that there are people who cannot sing or do not. It's because they do not sing. It's not that they cannot, but they do not. And if they try to apply vocal exercises and get some ear training, then it's possible for them to be singers, may not be good singers, because it's going to take several years. But to get a good voice, to just hold a note, or use that good voice for speech, that's really possible. Nandu Radhakrishnan is using speech pathology to help people become better singers, and he's doing it by studying people who can sing. If you ever decide to motor west, travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. I want to take techniques from singers for that good loudness control and for good quality or clarity in voice and apply that as a technique with normal people. The singers were given the task of singing both a happy song and a sad song. While they were doing that, Radha Christian hooked them up to record their airflow using a series of non-invasive tools. You will also have a collar, all this belt-like stuff around your neck. It has two electrodes that will go to the sides of your throat. What this would do is it passes a current from one electrode to the other. It's a current that you will not feel at all. What this current would do is it would pass between the vocal folds. And when the vocal folds open, current flow is going to be less. And when you close for voicing, current flow increases. That gives us an idea of how your larynx is vibrating or the vocal folds are vibrating when you're talking, singing, or any task that you do. This mask is going to be on your face. The task is to get the oral flow and oral pressure that you're using while singing. Mm -hmm. And this tube will be inside your mouth on top of your lips. These instruments work together to measure vocal production at four different channels. Two channels monitor airflow, one monitors oral pressure, and the other looks at how the vocal cords open and close for voice production. All this is important for Radha Christian's research because he can get a sense of what's happening physiologically when someone sings. He can then take that information and apply the techniques he's learned to people who want to use their voice professionally. But what you're trying to do is try to get both the art and science together, get the image and the physiological representation for each image and see if that can enhance learning or help singing students understand better. Radha Christian says he hopes his research can help people better understand their equipment when using their voices, because vocal production comes from all over the body. I believe that anything we can do to, to um, help to understand the voice is, is uh, very interesting, and I'm interested in that. Radha Christian hopes to have some data published on his research in a year. For Discovery News, I'm Casey D. Gardner.